be seated. Last week we talked about in the message that Christ Jesus proclaimed in the temple one day that his house should be called a house of prayer. And so during the service, just even though it's Easter, we're going to continue to do what Jesus proclaimed that his house would be. And so this morning, opening up for, for announcements and prayers and praises this morning, uh, one thing that I want to remind you guys of is this coming up Saturday, we have two memorial services at 9 a.m. We'll have the memorial service for Chiz Blewett. And at 2 p.m., there will be a memorial for John Sloan. Both of those are open to you guys. Um, we'll continue to social distance in this way. But at 9 a.m. for Chiz Blewett and 2 p.m. for John Sloan. Um, any praises this morning? I think one gigantic one we have, we join together, is that Jesus has risen from the grave. And so our hope is fulfilled. What other praises do you have for you or your family this morning? Yes, ma'am. I have a praise that is finally out loud, and I'm allowed to say it, that Amanda and Michael are having a baby girl, and her name is Peyton Rose. Uh, Ruth, sorry, Ruth, um, after Ed's mom. So, and then I do have an announcement that women's Bible study is on hiatus for a little bit, but we are starting the book of um, Nehemiah oh, uh, <laughs> at the end of April. I believe that's for the last Monday of April. I'll put a little bullet thing in the bulletin next week. Thanks. Praise God for Peyton Ruth, Michael and Amanda's soon-to-be little girl, September something. Yeah. Uh, September something. So <laughs> praise God for new babies. <laughs> Other praises. Yes, ma'am. I want to give a praise and a hallelujah that life is short to hear God has brought us through. Yeah. 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 It is welcome good to see you, buddy. Mike. Yeah, welcome home. I think that's the best way. It's good to see you, buddy. And I can't see all these, so just start talking. If you got a prayer request or a praise, please just say it out loud. Yes, ma'am. I want to praise my wife, Mary. Amen. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Okay, guys. Madeline, uh, just praying for my brother Jake, uh, that he would come to know the Lord as Savior, and praying for her brothers Patrick and Jonathan, that they would also be saved. So that Patrick would, just wants to understand more about Jesus and grow closer to him, and that this virus would go away. I think that is a gigantic yeah. amen to all of us. I just want to praise uh, the two on the prayer concerns. Noah is much improved with COVID, and my niece, Sue, also is feeling better. So yeah. thank you. Good, Donna, that'll come here. I have to. Um, Megan has COVID, so if everybody could um, pray for her. Um, and a family um, from Mount Olive, um, their, their name is the Gordons, and the wife passed um, two days ago from COVID. She's only in her 50s. And um, so pray for her husband and son, they're both Anthony Gordon. I would praise that I could make it up the hill to the sunrise service, <laughs> having been so inactive for the last couple of months. That was a good service. It was good to see you there this morning. Uh, prayer request for our family, um, and I'll come to you next, Ms. Faith, is my brother-in-law, Arturo. Many of you already know this. Arturo's family is still back home in Colombia, and Arturo's uh, my grandmother, both of his aunts, his uncle, Several of his family members have COVID, and it kind of ranges across the board. His aunt is very, very sick, and others have, you know, kind of a, a medium case, and then others are, aren't as sick, but it's just spreading. Um, several of them have underlying health issues, as well as age being a concern, and so if we could just pray for Arturo's family. Uh, that would be huge. Um, Ms. Faith? Yeah, pray for Bert. Thank you. All right. Yes. Thanks. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul. Everybody. Yeah. Pray for Paul's stuffy nose that Paul would feel better. <laughs> Praise God that there's, uh, even though we're in such unusual circumstances, we all have masks on and all sitting apart from each other. We have not allowed to sit in certain seats and everything. That God still put a desire on our heart to come together and worship. Amen. Thank you for, thank you for the obedience that you all show. I mean, it's it's warm fine right? right there with you. <laughs> Amen. Thanks, Jay. All right. Ron? I also have a, a prayer.
praise for my friend Mickey who went through uh, knee replacement surgery this week and we went to see her yesterday. And in a short amount of time, she's already starting to climb steps. Wow. So she's doing really well. Awesome. Yeah, that's another one over here somewhere. Say no. Does that go away? Hey, no, We're going to pray for this virus to go away. Can we do this now? I have to. This is the only way to do it. All right. You'll do it? All right, go ahead, Mike. <laughs> Not that easy. So, over the summer, our family will be relocating to Arkansas. So, our, my job is taking us there, and the family has been very supportive. But we will miss this place. Mm -hmm. so, hey. Yes. So pray for Debbie. Um, <laughs> if Dan who has to deal with Debbie. No, um, it, it is difficult. I will be honest. Uh, when Debbie slipped the news to me, I was just like instant deflated because um, we love you guys. Uh, obviously, great friends to our kids, friends to us, a huge part of this church. Mm -hmm. um, but here is the deal. While it is a loss, it's not a loss um, because they grow up, they know the faith, they're walking with the Lord Jesus. And so we're going to send them out, praising God as missionaries to northwestern Arkansas. And so it'll be difficult, uh, but we'll see them again and we'll celebrate as they go forward. And we'll be with Debbie as she walks through uh, this hard journey together. And pray for Elizabeth and her family. They're also moving back to the States uh, at some point uh, to Florida. And so pray for them. They do, the, they do know they can come back. Yeah, yeah. They do know they can come back. We will save their sin. <laughs> <laughs> we won't let anyone sit in that pew. <laughs> All right. Well, let's pray together this morning. Um, can I get a volunteer to open us for prayer, and then we'll close with the Lord's Prayer at the end. All right. Go ahead, Daryl. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I'd just like to thank you for this church family and able to worship together as a family, to worship you, and, and thank you so much for what you have done for us, and you have died on the cross for our sins, and you rose again, and you are always present in our lives, and, and we just thank you today. I thank you for all the blessings that you've given us, and just be with us as we go through this week. In Christ's name. Father, we thank you this morning for the cross of Christ. Yeah. Because through it we know that we have our sins are forgiven. And that we have hope. And that many mercies come through that cross. And we sing hallelujah to you today. We sing hallelujah with all our hearts, minds, and souls in the brightness of your newness. And we give you my thanks for my Lord that I've blessed him throughout this um, this from July. And brought him here today so that we can continue to sing hallelujah. He is truly a, a sign of your mercy. Great mercies, Lord, you bestowed upon the Ventura family and upon Mike. We thank you, Lord, for such such mercy, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for our pastor and his family. 
wisdom and guidance through this Associate Pastor Search. And I just ask you to guide us and to um, just show us the right candidate and, and let us step out in faith. Because um, I believe you have showed us the right candidate. And let us step out in faith and trust you, Lord. I just ask for guidance within the group of people that will be meeting with this candidate and speaking with that candidate. Um, and I just ask you to open our minds and our hearts to really feel your presence there and your direction. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time that we had this morning, up at the basin, that we could see the dawn of a new day, and the pink coming through the clouds, Lord, it was just a beautiful sight that this promise of a new day is coming. And it also reminded me, Lord, of how you ascended into heaven through the clouds, and you will return to us the same way. Lord, we thank you for all this grace and mercy that you have given us. Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for the privilege of prayer and the gift of it. Now, the truth is, is we're not comfortable praying for long distances of time. And Lord, I pray that you would make us more comfortable with praying. If the sun had to steal away in the darkness of the morning to go and pray and to be alone. Now, if the disciples in the early church spent hours Pray. How much more so do we need that? Oh God, we thank you for the blessing it is to pray. We thank you for the opportunity we have to praise. I thank you, Lord, that this morning, as Ron said, that we looked at the dawn of a new day. It's a new day full of hope and new mercies and new grace sufficient for this day. And if we have a tomorrow, God, you'll give us new mercies and new grace for that. I thank you, Lord, that you provide for us everything that we need through Christ Jesus. Thank you that we have a reason to celebrate because we don't celebrate a Savior who just went to a cross, but one who defeated the cross, defeated death, now sits at the right hand of the Father, participating in his work with him, speaking to him on our behalf. So, Lord, we join with him this morning as we pray to you these many requests. God, we thank you, Lord, for, God, just what's taking place here. I thank you, Lord, that you have burdened the hearts of people to gather together today, and we pray for protection. God, we know that we're wearing masks and we are distanced by groups. But God, if not for your protection, we're doomed with or without masks. And so, Lord, we beg you for your protection today. And I thank you for the family members who rose up today and helped their loved ones get here. God, who have cared for their loved ones and ministered to them, God, through COVID and other circumstances that we've walked through. And we just pray that you continue to bless these families. I thank you specifically for Mike being here today and just how it says, welcome home, it sounds so true. Lord, I just pray that you continue to bless him and Wendy and watch over them today. God, I pray, Father, for services this weekend as we celebrate the lives of two men who were here before. God, we thank you for the impact they had on all of us. And Lord, I pray for their families that you continue to minister to them. God, we thank you for Ron's friend, Mickey. And Lord, I pray for her recovering of her knee. God, as she continues to strengthen, that you would just be with her and and bless her. I also pray for Bert Middlestad. I just pray for just steadiness on his feet. And I pray, Father, that you continue to draw him to yourself and that you would do a great work and rescue him. I pray for my brother Arturo. I pray, Lord, that you would just comfort Arturo while he's separated by great distances from his family. That you would be with his grandmother and his aunts and his uncle and the rest of the family. God, would you strengthen their lungs and just give them the care that they need. 
Pray for the Gordon family that is walking through what many others have, but God now it is part of their family loss because of this virus. So would you minister to them? And Lord, we ask, Lord, in your goodness and in your power and in your perfect timing, after you've taught us what you're trying to teach us, remove this virus from the earth. Not only you have the ability to do that, Lord, we thank you for medicines and we thank you for vaccines and for doctors, God. But if you don't say it's finished, it's not finished. And so, Lord, we ask and beg you for your grace and mercy through the situation. I pray for my little friend Paul. I pray, Lord, that you would just take away his stuffy nose and that, Lord, you would help him to feel better. God, I thank you, Lord, that he knows that even a stuffy nose is worthy to pray for. God, so often we think that the little things aren't worth to bring to you because we don't want to bother you. And I pray that Paul would continue to hold on to that, that you would teach me and the adults in the room, God, that everything is a matter of prayer. Lord, I thank you for Paul today, and I pray you bless him. God, I pray, Father, for Megan and Eric as they walk through this difficulty of COVID. I pray that you would heal Megan and protect Eric and just give him the ability to care for his wife and his home and just to watch over everything they've got to do already. I just pray your blessings over their family. And God, I pray for the salvation of many. God, many in this room today. God, there are several that don't know you. And Lord, I can't pinpoint them out. You haven't called me to point my finger at them. So Lord, I pray that you would draw many to yourself, even in this room today, that they would come to know that their sins are forgiven and that one day they could rise from the grave as well to eternal life. And I pray that for my brother. Thank you for Jake and I thank you for Kelly. And I pray, Lord, that you would save them and use them for your glory. I pray for my little boys, my sons. I pray for Jonathan and Patrick, that they would come closer to you. They would surrender to you and know you as Lord and therefore a Savior as well. God, we thank you for the blessing to worship together. And Lord, we thank you for the Sullivans. God, I just pray for their whole family as they grieve separation. It's so difficult. And Lord, there really are no words that will comfort. And Lord, I thank you for Mike and I thank you for his company. Thank you, Lord, that you've given him the opportunity to expand his career. I pray that you bless his family and that you watch over Trinka. And Lord, you protect their marriage and just difficult days, Lord, as they wrap up one house and prepare it to sell. I pray that you would rise up the buyers that Lord, you have set aside already. You would give them a perfect house in Northwest Arkansas, and Lord, they would just plug right in. God, raise up the right church and let them find friends there. Lord, I thank you for Will and Little Trinka and Michaela. God, I thank you for the friends that they are to my kids and the friends that they are to others here. And I just pray that you'd bless them and help them to find new friends. God, I pray for all the concerns they have, whether it's gym classes or hockey leagues or other things. Lord, would you let them Find those things which are precious to them. Lord, we pray a blessing over our friends and we thank you for them. God, we thank you most of all for Christ. Lord, we thank you that today we can echo his words as we pray together in the model prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Joe The celebration time, maybe. Let's see what happens. Uh, please stand and we will have a quick prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord, and we thank you for your promises. And we know that your promises are true and your word is true. And everything we depend on and everything we rely on that you come, you say, Father, has come true. And we trust in that. In Jesus' name. Amen.
We know, Lord, that nothing can stop you, Father. We know that you are in charge. You tell the storms to come and you tell the winds to move. And we pray, Father, that you would move the winds in our way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You guys, you can be seated. Thank you again for being here on Easter Sunday. I know it's a busy day for a lot of us as we continue to celebrate the resurrection today. And it's just kind of thinking as I prayed through over this past week or several weeks about what in the world was going to be the Easter message. Because it's difficult to think about the same story we talk about every single year. But how do you keep it fresh? You don't make it fresh, but how do you keep it fresh? So, Lord, what in the world do you want us to talk about this week? And I just started to think about it's nice to have something to celebrate for once. I feel like all of the past 12, 13, 14 months, it feels like five years at this point, has just been losing stuff or separation, and it's so nice to celebrate. And then I pray and I say, God, what verse or what passage do you want me to preach on this week? What is it you want me to say this week? Is somebody prayed this morning for the Lord, and it's the same prayer I pray. God, you put your words in my mouth because I only want to say what you have. And he did. He gave me one verse, just one verse. And so this morning, if you would, as we continue to celebrate, go ahead and go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. It's one we've looked at before in here. It's got some history with this church. And as I kind of started to think about this passage and kind of look at some and dig into some of the stuff, I thought about kind of a neat thing that may have happened. And so the history of this verse here is, if you recall, just over a year ago, I finished up my first sermon series here, a five-week sermon series on the purposes of the church came in on March 8th of 2020. I stood right here, right there. And I said that the Lord is leading us to walk through the book of 1 Peter together. And I preached through those first two verses thinking that it was just going to be normal. Everything was going to be easy as we walked through 2020. Preaching through the book of 1 Peter, which is not an easy book to walk through. And then the world went into chaos. March 15th, I sat in front of a computer screen and a computer camera by myself in an office by myself. And you were in your living rooms or gathered with family, maybe, as we preached through 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 that we're going to look at today. And everything felt wrong. Nothing felt right. Everything felt broken. It didn't feel comfortable. It wasn't fun for me. It wasn't fun for you. It hasn't been fun. It didn't feel normal. Didn't feel normal. That word has become one that we never use so much in our history is the word normal. As a matter of fact, my dad told me to stop saying the phrase new normal. Because that's what we hear on the news. It's what we say all the time when the new normal comes or when this new normal comes. And now we've transitioned away from the idea of normal or new normal. And now we just say, I just hope we get to something that looks like normal. And so not even expecting it to look anything like what we used to define as normal. And so as I pray through 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, and say, God, what in the world is going on? I still don't feel normal. I don't feel right. What even is normal anymore? Every good nerd, as he starts to repeat a word over and over, wants to dig into that word. And so I thought about the word normal. What does it even mean? And so I did a little word study, and normal comes from a Latin word. It's one that you'll remember very easily. Normalis. Normal comes from the word normalis, a Latin word, and here's what it means. It's crazy. Normalis is an architectural term. It's an architectural term, and by definition, it means this, according to the carpenter's square. So normalis means whatever the carpenter says is right. And so if you have a, a bad carpenter, a corrupt carpenter, a sneaky carpenter, they may squeeze in their carpenter square to make angles a little smaller or expand them to make them a little bit wider, kind of like manipulating scales that we see in the scripture. But according to that carpenter, what he says is right. But if you have a true and righteous carpenter that stands by what is right and righteous, the angles are perfect. And that it's his standard that matters. It's his standard that defines what normalis, normal, is. Guys, when I tell you I read this word study of the word normalis, normal, and it was an absolute rebuke to me because as I sat in my office and I prayed, God, what in the world is going on? I don't feel normal. I don't feel right. I, I feel broken. I'm sad because friends are moving. I'm sad because I'm sad. I don't even know what's going on anymore. It's just a difficult season. I feel weighed down. I don't feel normal. Rock normal is what I tell you normal is. 
It's the standard of the righteous carpenter, Jesus. And maybe you don't feel normal because you've tried to squeeze in the angles and maybe you've tried to make yourself feel a certain way when the whole time you've taken your eyes off of what the real thing is. And this is something that I preach week in and week out and week in and week out. Making sure that we stay focused on Jesus, but I think, honestly, I've missed it. I've missed normalis. And so walking into this Easter season, I just haven't felt right. And so as a rebuke of looking at what is normal even, looking at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Normal according to our righteous carpenter. What must it be? And that's the Easter message for 2021. So 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Let's look at what our Savior said through his word. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Father, we thank you for this morning. Lord, I lay myself down at your feet again and I ask you to forgive me for where I've been selfish and wallowed in self-pity. God, life is hard. About a year ago as we walked through this book, we just week after week after week, we talked about how life is hard, especially for the Christ follower. And I guess I didn't hear it. And so this morning, as I did yesterday, once again, I come fresh and I ask that you would measure me again, compare me to the carpenter square. Uh, so that I could be right, normal according to Jesus. Lord, in Christ Jesus, we have been made holy. We have been declared the righteousness of God because he who knew no sin became sin for us. But this morning, God, I think all of us, all of us could use some realigning. So realign us to what the true Easter message is. What you consider to be the right standard, the right measure for all those who declare that Jesus is Lord. God, open our eyes and let us behold great and wondrous things from the scripture. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So what is Easter about? Let me get our answer right off the bat. The very first sentence in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Easter is all about the Father. All about him. Everything to his glory. All for his name's sake. All for him. It's not to feel good for me. It's not to feel right for me. It's not about the, the gathering even of the people. It's not about the gathering of your family later. It's not about the fun little things we get to do with our kids. It's not about any of that stuff. Easter is for the glory of the Father. That's it. Every day for Christ followers, if we said last week, and we should say every week, reminding each other every single day for the Christ follower is Easter Sunday. Every day that we are given is a resurrection day. And so the point of all of it is all for his glory. When you gather with your family later today for his glory, when you come together in this room, we are here for his glory. Reading his word right now, singing songs that we've sung and singing songs that we will sing are all for his glory. Everything. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's all for him and for his name's sake that he might be high and lifted up. And for those who've been set out on this great commission journey, he says, where I am lifted up, I will draw men to myself. We don't see a lot of people coming to know the Lord as Savior these days. We don't see people confessing Jesus as Savior a lot. Not anymore. Maybe it's because we misaligned ourselves. And we've made normal more about us. This doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel comfortable. This doesn't feel normal. But the Easter message is all to the glory. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture says it this way. Whatever you do, whether you eat, drink, let it all be to the glory of the Lord. That is the Easter message. Everything we do to the glorification and the magnifying of the Father was Jesus' whole mission. Why? Why is that the point of it all? 
Why is the glory of God the point of everything we do on every Easter Sunday you get? Tomorrow when it's Easter Sunday again. Tuesday when it's Easter Sunday again. Wednesday when it's Easter Sunday again. Thursday when it does, sure doesn't feel like Easter Sunday, but it's still a resurrection day. Why is all the point, the point still the glory of the Father? Because he is God and you are not. Because he is God and I am not. He is the great I am. We are not that. And so often we think this world has to, to the, the flow for us, it has to feel right for us. Everything has to do and to serve us. Everything we do in this world is to try to make it serve us better. But that was never the intention. The intention of all of it is to sing his praises. This morning my mother sent me a text message and said I got woken up by a bird this morning that was so incredibly loud. And I was so annoyed and then I realized it's just doing what he's supposed to do. Singing the praises of the Father at the loudest tone that it can. And so often we just think about how can I just make it quiet for my sake. Everything for the glory of the Lord. Why? Because he alone is the Lord. He is God. But also, not in just who he is, but that can't be separated from what he has done. You can't take the character of God away from the activity and the actions of God. And so it's all for the glory of the Lord because he is the Lord, but also that as the Lord, what he's done for us. And what has he done for us? And we see this in the second part of this scripture. It says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy. Mercy is one of those difficult words to define. And I think the simplest definition that we've been walking through in our house is that mercy is just not getting something that you deserve. Something that you deserve, you don't get it. Meaning that instead of getting the thing you deserve, you've gotten something else. Because if you're not getting one thing, that means you're getting something else. And so according to this great mercy of God, not getting something else, what we see here is not God changing because God doesn't change. The Bible makes that clear that God is not like man. He does not change. But we do see that God's view towards us changes. His position towards us changes. So what does great mercy mean? Mercy, in the simplest definition, is not getting something you deserve. But in looking deeper into the language, great mercy means this. Active compassion. Not just compassionate, but a chase you down compassion. A coming to, to wrap you up arm in arm and walk with you, compassion. Seeking you out, compassion. Wanting to be there in the middle of your trials and your troubles, compassion. What I hear about when you sing the praises of your family that get you to church or caring for your spouse or, or praying for your daughter or walking by your loved ones that hurt or as they grieve because they have to leave or a sister that has to watch them leave, all the things that are difficult, grieving there, having compassion by being with them. Active compassion seeking them out to do this and this is the view that god has taken towards us and we talked about that god doesn't change but that god has changed his view towards us and what does that mean mercy not getting what you deserve but getting something different active comp compassion because what do we deserve for all his sin fallen short of the glory of god and the wages of sin is death it's not a punishment it's not just a spanking it's not just being grounded not spending a couple years in a bad place and then purged out of you and then you get to go on to some other better place. No. A just and righteous God has to punish rebellion and all sin is rebellion. Don't choose your token favorite sin to pick on. Choose the sin that you committed this morning and I choose the sin that I committed five minutes ago. All of those sins are deserving of death and condemnation and wrath. Active wrath. Jesus said this in John chapter 3. He said, I didn't come to condemn the world because the world is condemned already. Already under his active wrath, but in his great mercy, he says, I am coming to show you active compassion instead. We deserve active wrath, but God in his great mercy has shown us active compassion. His focus on us has changed because of his great mercy, not because of us. But there's more. What does this active compassion, this great mercy mean for us on Easter Sunday and tomorrow on Easter Sunday and on Thursday, Resurrection Day? What does it mean for us every single day, this active compassion, great mercy that he shows for us? What is it? He has caused us to be born again. Now, it's interesting here because the words he has caused us to be are nowhere in the Greek. 
I mean, not even a hint of them. They're just not there. Just not there at all. It's just one of those times that when you try to translate from one language to another language, if you just did it exactly as it goes, it wouldn't make any sense at all. doesn't matter what languages they are, if they're close, if they're similar. If you translate from one language directly to another, it's not going to sound right grammatically. It's not going to be smooth. And so when this was translated from Greek to English, they had to add in a couple smoothing words. He has caused this to be. But what does it really say in Greek? What it says is this. His great mercy has begotten us again. Birthed us again. His great mercy has given you new life. Not of yourselves. It's not from you. You can't earn it. It's not something you can make happen in the, in the way that you didn't make your first birth happen. It had nothing to do with you. Nothing at all. Neither does the second one. His great mercy did that. His great mercy has begotten us again. Do you see what's going on here? Normalis is achieved because of the great mercy of the Father. Normalis, according to the carpenter's square. Whatever the carpenter says is the standard. doesn't matter what you say the standard is. doesn't matter what any preacher says the standard is. If I tell you, hey, if you're just good or if you just try really hard or you come enough or give enough money or go on enough mission trips or do all these things, if I say that's the standard, I'm lying to you. The only standard that matters, according to the word normalis, is the carpenter. And what does he say? John chapter 3. It's so black and white. I don't understand how it's missed. So black and white. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. That's it. There's no wiggle there. There's no shaking out of that. There's no sneaking around the corner. Sure, people can change it and they can add things to it. And they can say, well, if you do this a little bit or if you go here enough or say these things or act this way or do this stuff or stop doing this and start doing this or, 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 or go to this group or any of these things. No, their words don't matter. They're not God. I'm not God. Jesus is God. He said, Unless you are born again, you will not, you cannot, you won't see the kingdom of God, nor malice. But according to his great mercy, you've been born again. If in Christ Jesus, that means God has shown his great mercy to you. And you have been begotten again, not of yourselves, so that none of us can boast all of him. As if that's not good enough. Born again to what? Because people are always born to something. Born to a family. Born to a city. Born to a neighborhood. Born, born to a certain type of life. And so born again because of the great mercy of God. We're born unto a living hope. You'll be shocked to find out that we've misdefined another word. Hope. If I went around this room and I said, hey, what does hope mean? We would probably come along and, and we would work together and we'd come up with a definition. It'd be somewhere along the lines of wishful thinking. Man, I hope that when we go to lunch today that, that Aunt Rosie has that apple pie that I love. I mean, I really hope that the snow is done for the season. I hope that it's not so incredibly hot this summer. Or I hope the spring rains wash out the pollen. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm hoping that it will. Just wishful thinking, but that's not the definition of the word. It's not it. It was never wishful thinking. It is confident expectation. Wishful thinking depends on me. Wishful thinking depends on Aunt Rosie and her pie. Confident expectation depends on another one. One who can hold something fast and cling to something fast and not be moved, not be shaken, not be blown by every storm. Who can walk on the water because he's above all things. And he has said that we have been born again to a living hope and expectation. And it's not just any old hope. It's living and it's active. It's breathing. Why? Why? Born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This is the turning point. This is the turning point. If not for the resurrection, the rest of it is 
garbage. The rest of it's garbage. It is not enough for Jesus to die on the cross. Thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people died on Roman crosses. It was just the way they killed people. Tons of people have died for other people. We're praying today for the soldiers who are gathered in foreign lands and can't gather with their families today. And many of them will lose their lives for us. And many of you have family members who lay down their lives for other people. Lots of people die for other people. It's not that. It's not enough just to die. The resurrection from the grave is it. This is the day. This is the biggest day. Easter Sunday, and for the Christian, for the Christ follower, for the born again one who is walking in the great mercy of God, Every day is Resurrection Day, and that is our hope, and that doesn't move, that doesn't wiggle, because it's not from us. The resurrection, it's all about the resurrection. So Easter, 2021, and 22, and 23, and whatever we get, and Monday, and Tuesday, and Wednesday, and Thursday, and whatever days we get, Easter Every day is about the glory of God because he alone is God. And as God, he is good. And in his goodness, he sent his one and only begotten son to take on the cross for the sins of the world according to the scriptures and to be buried according to the scriptures. And in his great mercy to rise from the grave so that you and I could also be born again, not of us, but of him to a living hope because Christ has risen from the grave. So I hope that Nothing else goes right for the rest of your life, and it may not. We may never get to normal again. Never. Normalis may never feel like normal according to our little weak carpenter squares. But the king, the savior, the one risen from the grave, has said it's all for the glory of the father. He has shown you his great mercy that in Christ Jesus you can be born again to a living hope, having your sins forgiven, that one day you too could defeat death for his glory and for his praise. That is the Easter message. The resurrection, people. And so let's close this way again. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. And as we go out there in a world that is broken and hurting, that is our greeting. That is our slogan. Not a secret one. It's an out loud one. Because Jesus rose from the grave. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for Easter Sunday because of the reminder that it is. And the truth is, Lord, that your spirit, if in Christ Jesus, lives inside each one of us. And so what better reminder could I have to live according to the carpenter square than the spirit of him living in me? So again, I ask for forgiveness. And I thank you that it's available. That I'm going to have hard days. Our emotions are going to ebb and flow. We're going to weep and we're going to grieve and we're going to mourn. That's just part of a broken world. But God, never let me, never let us lose the fact that if in Christ Jesus, we're resurrection people. The grave no longer has a sting. The, the biggest thing the world can throw at us isn't real anymore. Help us to hold that. And Lord, there are many here today gathering in the group that you call your church. They may not know that. So, Lord, there's nothing that I can do to convince them. You haven't called me to convince anyone. But, Lord, in your great mercy, if you would see willing and fit today, would you rebirth them? Let them be born again. Give them the gift of faith that they can confess that Jesus is Lord and believe that he rose from the grave. For the blessing of eternal life. God, I thank you for this time. Let us go as your people with your message to a world that needs it. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Easter is about Christ rising from the grave. And I don't know that Easter would be right without singing this last hymn. And so the last one is Christ arose. You can stand, sit, but let's sing this together. <laughs>
I know that there's a long-standing tradition that after that song, something takes place, but I don't have a clue what it is. And so, Marilyn, let's play that one last time, that last line, and let's give everybody an opportunity to say the line that you're waiting on me to say because I'm not going to say it alone. And so, some of you know what I'm talking about. Most of us don't. And so, if you would play that last line, and those of you that have a clue, let's hear it. Father, I thank you for my friend, my friends. I thank you for this local body. I thank you, God, for the blessing it is to gather here, right now, this moment, because Christ is risen. God, we wouldn't come together to celebrate a dead Savior. We wouldn't believe that. Lord, thank you for a risen Savior. Christ, we thank you for calling us to yourself. We lift you high up today. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And use us to spread that message. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Happy Easter. Happy Easter.